President Matamela Siramaposa has suspended Western Cape Judge President John Trope pending a decision from the National Assembly. The suspension is with immediate effect on condition that Trope has completed all of his part head court matters. According to a statement from the presidency's office, Ramaposa has gone on the advice from an independent legal expert after receiving a JSC report on the 27th of July this year. The report concluded that Lopez's conduct breached that of the Constitution by attempting to influence two constitutional court justices who were dealing with cases involving the former president, Jacob Gedeche Gisa Zuma. The JSC has referred the matter to Parliament to institute impeachment proceedings against Lope. Let's get some reaction now. We're joined by Alison Tilly from Judges Matter. Alison, uh, good afternoon. Is this a uh, surprise in, in terms of the legal fraternity, or this is where this matter was always going to end? I think the only surprise is really that it took the president this long um, to actually move on it. And I, I do understand that he said that he wanted to get an independent legal opinion before he moved on the on the recommendation from the JSC, but I think um, you know this was th this was going to happen. And um, as I say, the, the the puzzle is that it actually it, it took as long as it did. Yeah. So so just remind our viewers. I mean, this this issue of Klopp's conduct in terms of attempting to influence uh, uh, two constitutional court justices in matters involving the former president Jacob Zuma. Uh, I mean, what exactly was what a judge cannot do? Well, I think the the key thing there was that the uh, it was what was considered an improper attempt. Um, to influence the outcome of cases pending before the court. And, and of course, one of the, the issues that was uh, discussed in, in the matter was really when it's appropriate for colleagues to talk to each other about cases that are pending and, and when it's actually an improper uh, attempt to influence another judge. And so that was, that was part of the discussion and, and eventually the findings on the facts was that he did attempt to uh, influence uh, his his brother and sister uh, judges on the on the constitutional court, and uh, that was the basis uh, for the the proceedings which have been going on since two thousand and eight. Yeah, and th that's the basis of the unconstitutionality, therefore, of his of of of, of his action. Uh, perhaps the president took long, as you say, Alison. Maybe he was waiting for the proper independent legal advice. That's quite possible. Um, certainly, this has been a, a, a complex matter. It's run uh, over many years. There have been many uh, applications for, for review and leave to appeal along the way. Uh, so just getting your head around what has happened at all the different stages uh, is something that, that would be difficult for the, the president uh, or his office to do uh, off the cuff. Um, so, you know, maybe that was the reason that he was looking for the, the legal opinion. Um, I think the law in it was, was relatively straightforward, but um, certainly the, the facts, uh, you know, this has really been a long and, a long and winding road, um, yeah. but mm, here we are. So the matter is now headed to Parliament for impeachment? Exactly. And that, um, as I understand it, it's going to be the first time that an impeachment of uh, a judge is considered uh, by the National Assembly, let alone a judge president. Um, a judge president leads a division. So Judge Schlope is the judge president for the Western Cape uh, and manages um, all of the judges judges in the Western Cape. So it's a uh, it's not just a judge, but it's a judge in a leadership position and a very senior judge who's been on the bench for a, for a long time. So it really is making history, perhaps not not in the way one would one would hope, uh, but uh, for for any judge. But certainly at, at this point, it's going to be a new process uh, for Parliament, and and they're going to have to figure out how to do it. And, we know from the other impeachment processes that it's it's not straightforward. You have to you have to have rules and you have to apply them. So I I wouldn't expect that this uh, process would wrap up uh, quickly. Um, I think it's going to take time and and of course it should take time because we don't want a situation where you can unseat 
sitting judges quickly or easily. Uh, we want it to be difficult. We don't want the executive or parliament to be able to interfere with judicial independence. Yeah, it's going to be a long drawn out process, as you correctly say, it takes its time and it will be necessary, as you say, being the first time as well, uh, Parliament will be uh, instituting impeachment proceedings against a, um, a judge president. So what happens to that role? I read in my intro here that the suspension is with immediate effect unless or on condition that Lope has completed all of his uh, part head court matters. So does it mean he has to do finish the job at hand and then and whatever is done, the cases that are in front of him, the matters in front of him, then he's done. I think that's very important for, for litigants to know um, who have cases that are either part heard or awaiting judgments in, in the Western Cape High Court. This won't prejudice them. Um, the judge president is still able to complete those cases. The major difference um, is going to be that immediately, and, and it's probably going to be the deputy judge president who, who will have to take over, the, the question around allocation of cases um, will will immediately uh, no longer be something that his office is, is responsible for um, as, as he is um, suspended. And that's a very important and powerful role that the judge president plays, as well as the appointment of acting judges in that division. So again, a, a very important role, uh, which will have to be taken over probably by the uh, deputy judge president. Okay, now from a perspective, uh, from a judge, judge's matter perspective, you've mentioned this is the first time, therefore it's historic. But just broadly, from a legal perspective, what is the significance that uh, a sitting judge president is now facing impeachment in parliament? Well, I think it's, you know, I, I, there's, there's different ways of looking at it. And I suppose as, as a, a, an incorrigible optimist, let me let me try and say that the glass is, is half full. I think in many jurisdictions, um, judicial misconduct is, is difficult to deal with, and, and ours as well. Um, there are a number of, of complaints that really need to be dealt with quickly. Uh, the JSC is not proved able to deal with complaints expeditiously. And so it's, it's, it's really proved a, a very difficult area uh, to navigate. Now we have a bit more of a sense of, of how that works and how it should work. Uh, the kinks in the legislation have been worked out. A lot of the legislation dealing with, with uh, judicial conduct has been challenged and found to be constitutional. So uh, I think that, the, the, it, that in some ways, uh, Judge President Klopper has, has, you know, cleared the way, laid the path. Um, in, in order to make sure that we can deal with, with misconduct uh, in the judiciary and, and make sure the judges are held accountable. Thank you very much for your time and insights this afternoon and your reaction to this breaking news this afternoon. That's Alison Tilly from Judges Matter.